Hi everyone and welcome. Thank you for joining us today to enhance your delivery of our cash supporting teaching and learning qualifications. And especially to those centres who have joined us from around the world, we do appreciate your support. Throughout this webinar, please feel free to answer any questions by typing them in the bar on the right hand side of the screen and we'll, we, we will be having a question and answer session at the end where we'll be answering your questions. I'd now like to pass you over to Janet Scott, who is our sub subject specialist in supporting, teaching and learning. Thank you. Thank you, Janice, and welcome to all our centres joining us today from the UK and overseas. Just a little slide here to introduce myself. However, as Janice has already said, any queries relating to this webinar, um, please type in your questions at the end and we should have time for um, answering them. So I just want to share a little bit of background to our redevelopment. Following feedback from our centres, demand for new qualifications in the sector and having market leading sector knowledge, we worked endlessly last year to create a new fit for purpose suite of qualifications, which were launched in January 2018. We gathered valuable feedback from a group of experts in roles such as head teachers, school support staff, influential sector organisations, tutors and assessors to ensure our redevelopment was fit for purpose, truly engaging and responsive to the diverse role of today's teaching assistant. So let's have a look at the new suite in more detail, starting with an overview. As you can see, level one and level two awards are for those preparing to work in a school or a college. Then we have the workforce qualifications, the level two certificate, and the nested award, certificate and diploma at level three. Our level four advanced practitioner qualification is aimed at those seeking further professional development. And these have all been open for learner registrations since the 1st of February, 2018. And as you all know, education is experiencing changing times and fluctuating landscapes. We've listened to the feedback from our centers and whilst current apprenticeship frameworks and the new apprenticeship standards take hold, we made the decision to extend the original provision until the apprenticeship frameworks are closed. Therefore, to avoid confusion, the original suite of supporting teaching and learning qualifications are now generally referred to as our legacy qualifications. And these have been extended until the 31st of August, 2020 or until such a time that the apprenticeship frameworks for supporting teaching and learning are withdrawn. Now this means both the legacy qualifications and the new qualifications will be running concurrently, so please do take care you register your learners on the correct qualification. Apprenticeship learners should be registered onto the legacy, the original qualifications, as they currently sit within the framework. The scope of the new qualifications now include learner supporting colleges, ensuring your learners gain knowledge of working across primary schools, secondary schools and colleges. And both your learners and employers will have confidence that the knowledge and skills the learner gains will be suitable for all types of learning environments, thus allowing the learner to move between these more e easily once employed. Now, we've made all the units mandatory where previously centres and learners could choose from a range of optional units in our legacy qualifications. This will give the learners a more holistic view of what is involved in a supporting teaching and learning role in a school or a college. Now before we look at the qualifications in more detail, I'd just like to highlight the subject of staff competency in relation to our new suite of qualifications. It is your responsibility to ensure your assessors and internal quality assurers, your IQAs, are competent in sector knowledge and skills. So they are qualified to assess or internally quality assure, and that they can demonstrate up-to-date and sector-relevant CPD, professional development. Now further in-depth guidance around staff competency can be found in our guidance book. And I've included a screenshot here at the front of the guidance book so that you can see what it looks like. And on the right hand side of the slide, I've put the steps you need to follow to locate this book on our new design website. Now this document can be found on the cash members area for approved centres. 
Now, if you're a new centre and you're interested in delivering these qualifications and accessing these resources, Janice will explain at the end of this webinar how you can um, do that and submit your inquiry. If your centre has historically delivered our legacy STL qualifications, you will have automatic approval for our new suite, so you do not need to reapply. And in preparation ahead of delivering the new suite of supporting teaching and learning qualifications, I would advise all staff to review their current competency against the content of these new updated qualifications. Our external quality assurers will be checking staff development records during their annual centre audits. Given the additions of new content of these qualifications, you must be able to demonstrate how you have updated your own knowledge and practice. A failure to present up-to-date and relevant staff development records could affect your centre's direct claim status. So your staff may wish to undertake some professional development in topics such as mental health in children, young people, a wider scope of types of abuse such as FGM, fabricated or induced illness, trafficking and online abuse. And given the range now covers colleges, consideration should also be given to types of abuse generally associated with older children and young people, such as peer-on-peer -peer sexual harassment, radicalisation, or child criminal exploitation like county lines. New additions to the qualifications include different ways that boys and girls learn and working with bilingual children. As tutors, assessors or IQAs, you must be up to date with the recent changes in the legislation, such as the GDPR that came into place in May and the revised Keeping Children Safe in Education 2018. And having an awareness of the new addition to the curriculum, relationships, sex education and health, which all schools should be teaching from September 2019, will ensure your learners are equipped with up-to-date knowledge. So let's look at the qualifications in a bit more detail. <coughs> Starting with our Level 1 award in preparing to work in schools. The objective of this qualification is to support learners to gain an understanding of what a school learning environment is like, and it can be offered to learners aged 14 years and above. The qualification is aimed at a range of people who are thinking about working in a school environment. Now, these could be young people, mature learners, parents who want to volunteer in a school, or maybe even explore a career change. It might be learners with special educational needs or where English is an additional language. And this qualification could also be a really useful induction for new staff. Learners do not need to be working or on a practical placement to take this qualification and it can usually be completed in about three months. It is internally assessed using a range of assessment methods. Learners will understand about children and young people from five to 19 years but we have included some early years development to enhance the learner's knowledge. And I've identified the three units here that your learners will undertake on the slide. Yes. Moving on to the level two award in support work in schools and colleges. Now this qualification replaces the legacy level two support work in schools and is very similar in content. So if you have previously delivered that qualification, you will find this new one very familiar. You will see that we've included supporting learners in colleges as well as schools, and we've updated areas such as e-safety, for example. This qualification is an introduction to the knowledge and understanding needed to work in a school or college environment, and is available to learners aged 16 years and above. It can apply to the many varied roles that full-time or part-time staff may fulfill, for example, admin roles, site support roles, technical roles and volunteers, as well as roles that work directly with children and young people in a learning environment. The learners do not need to be working or on a practical placement to take this qualification, and it can usually be completed in about six months. It is internally assessed using a range of assessment methods. The age range covered is from five years, but again, we've included some early years development to further enhance your learner's understanding. 
There are six mandatory units in this qualification and three of the units that I've identified here by asterisk are shared with the level two certificate. So this provides a direct progression route. Moving on to the level two certificate in supporting teaching and learning. This is the first qualification in our workforce route. So your learners will be needed to be working or on a practical place placement for the duration of the course in a learning environment. So that could be a school or a college as they need to show competence in both skills and knowledge. And it can usually be completed in about a year. There are 11 units in this qualification, but remember it contains three units from the level two award in support work in schools. Again, I've highlighted those by the asterisk. So your learner could carry these units forward if they have already successfully achieved them. You will find that there are no optional units. All the units in this qualification are mandatory to develop knowledge in key areas. And we took the most popular option units from the legacy qualifications and redeveloped them into mandatory units for this qualification. For example, providing displays in a learning environment and understanding play and leisure. Furthermore, we've taken up content which is no longer relevant or no longer fit for purpose for the qualifications. And we've updated content to include topics such as the prevent duty and e-safety, considering children's use of smartphones and tablets. And from this qualification, your learners could progress onto the level three. So here we have an overview of our level three award, certificate and diploma in supporting teaching and learning. As you can see, it's a nested qualification which shares units within each. And this supports your progression, retention and achievement, allowing for learners to drop off after completing the award or the certificate level. And it's the same structure of, as many of our nested qualifications. So you should be familiar with this structure. The Level 3 Award provides learners with an understanding of the knowledge needed when working directly with children or young people in a school or a college. Now it's suitable for learners who are not yet working in a Level 3 role, but they are able to achieve at this level. And it's also really suitable uh, for initial training for new staff. And since the four units are knowledge only, learners do not need to be working or on a placement. And from the award, they can, can progress onto the level three certificate in supporting teaching and learning, which we'll look at now. Now at certificate level, learners must be working or on a placement as they have to demonstrate their competence and their skills as well as their knowledge. And we recommend 100 placement hours in a real working environment, which must be undertaken during the taught program of study. So this placement will provide opportunities for your learner to apply their knowledge to practice, receive feedback and reflect upon their own experiences. It also provides opportunities for the learners to observe professional practice in action and gain, and gain valuable employability skills. Again, all units at certificate level are mandatory and they will be assessed internally using diverse assessment methods. Much of the content will be familiar to you, but it has been updated to ensure it fits the purpose and it will support a current workforce. For example, a consideration has been given to the use of digital mobile devices from a safeguarding perspective. We're looking at a wider range of types of abuse. And in order to reflect government agendas and general awareness, we have included some understanding of mental health concerns in children and young people and considering how it affects their learning and development, as well as their welfare. The Child Development Unit provides knowledge and understanding from birth to 19 years, and we have included underpinning theoretical perspectives. And last of all, let's have a look at the diploma. So this qualification provides learners with an in-depth understanding of the knowledge and skills needed when working directly with children and young people in a learning environment. And that learning environment could be primary, secondary, special schools or colleges. It has been aligned to the Level 3 Teaching Assistant Apprenticeship Standards. 
and it covers all aspects of specialist support, including planning, delivering and reviewing assessment strategies to support learning alongside a teacher, special needs support, personal development and reflective practice. Theoretical perspectives relating to speech and language development have been included, as well as supporting bilingual learners. Once again, we've included supporting the mental health of young people. And we've explored the role of play, leisure and extracurricular activities. Now we've developed an in-depth tutor guidance to support your delivery and we strongly recommend you use this in tandem with the qualification specification. Learners must be working or on a practical placement and we recommend learners undertake 100 hours of placement in a real work environment which should be taken during the taught programme of study. So let's just recap. CASH recommends the learner undertakes 100 hours of placement at certificate level and 100 hours of placement at diploma level. So that totals 200 hours. And upon achievement, learners can progress onto the level four certificate for the advanced practitioner in schools and colleges, a foundation degree, or maybe even specialist roles within the workforce. So at this point, I just want to highlight the importance of ensuring you are working from the most up-to-date version of our specifications. As these new qualifications bed in and following feedback from centres, we recently made some minor changes to the Level 3 Diploma and the Level 4 Advanced Practitioner around a couple of assessment criteria. And we've also revised the guided learning hours for the Level 3 Diploma and the Level 3 Certificate. So when a change to any of our qualifications is made, this page within the specification will identify what the change is and when it was made. So it's really important that you check our website or you make note of any information included in our regular communications to a centre. And I put a screenshot here from the Level 3 Diploma specification. Now, if you personally do not receive our communications newsletter, I would advise you find out who it is in your organisation that does receive them because you may be missing some vital updates about our new suite of qualifications. And if you're not yet delivering our qualifications, Janice will explain at the end of this webinar how you can access these resources and get, uh, receive our newsletters. And finally, let's look at our exciting new Level 4 qualification, which aims to provide professional development opportunities for practitioners working in a school or college workforce. It will challenge the learner in both daily practice and theoretical understanding and develop their leadership skills to mentor others. Now, this qualification is aimed at learners who are employed in suitable roles in a school or college. And it is your responsibility to check this before you register your learners in order to support their achievement. Learners must be at least 18 years old and a previous level three study is a clear advantage. However, the wealth of experience, knowledge and understanding gained by working in a school or a college is a requirement for this CPD qualification. Your external quality assurer will be able to offer you further advice regarding learner suitability for registration on this qualification. We do not set any other entry requirements, but as a centre you may wish to set, set your own guidelines to ensure your learners are in a suitable job role in order to meet the assessment criteria of this qualification. For example, learners are expected to reflect on own working experiences, influencing and managing change. They should be working in partnership with parents, mentoring others, and also consider the national strategy in regards to the promotion of mental health and well-being. And in addition, learners will be required to undertake a small-scale research project to plan, implement, and evaluate change in their own working environment. Now, learners should not be guided to achieve this qualification through hefty assignments alone. Instead, they will build a portfolio of evidence. And if they are in the correct job role, it should be possible to gather much of this evidence from their work environment. The qualification will be internally assessed using a range of methods and can usually be completed in about a year. Upon achievement of this qualification, learners will be equipped as an advanced practitioner. 
Now that we've explored the new suite, I want to highlight some of the amazing support available to you. We have developed tutor guidance packs, which are invaluable tools and will support your planning and your delivery. And I strongly recommend you download them from our website and use them in tandem with the qualification specification. These resources provide guidance around the content, interpreting the assessment criteria and detailing our delivery expectations. In addition, there are optional cash tasks for you to use, case studies and sources of further reading and recommended websites, along with examples of schemes of work. Now, if you have learners that are currently on the old qualifications, the legacy qualifications, and are looking to progress onto the diploma, we can support you with some guidance. We also have a partnership with Hodder Education, who have developed textbooks and dynamic learning resources for the Level 2 Certificate and the Level 3 Award Certificate and Diploma. And I put a screenshot here on this PowerPoint slide so that you can see what these books look like. In addition to the support I've highlighted, we have many interesting articles written by sector specialists on our alumni site. Now, this is available for all cash learners, past and present, to join. And you can find out more information on www.cashalumni.org.uk. Some of the articles will even support staff professional development in relation to this new suite of qualifications. And I've recently added an interesting podcast about county lines and updates about changes to legislation. So I thank you for listening. I hope this has given you a good understanding of our exciting new suite of qualifications. And I'm now going to pass you back to Janice. Thank you, Janice, for a very informative, informative session. What I would like to tell you now is a little bit about an a range of additional qualifications that may enhance your staff CPD. Or alternatively, they can be an additional qualification for learners on support and teaching and learning. This will really give them an advantage going forward when going for job interviews. And it will give them a greater knowledge within the sector. So first of all, a brand new qual that only was launched yesterday. We've had lots of interest and lots of, lots of staff who've asked for us to do this. So we do listen to what you require. And we've got a lovely award in there, special educational needs coordination in the early years setting. We also have an award for supporting individuals with learning disabilities, which is great to cover learners who've got dyslexia. We've got Understanding Autism, which is a certificate, which is slightly bigger. We have um, working with individuals with learning disabilities, health conditions, and a very popular one with CPD within all of the colleges is Understanding Behaviour That Challenges, and another very popular one within the colleges and independent training providers is your mental health problems. These will really enhance both yourself and your learners. So now we're going to look at some questions. So please bear with us um, to see if we've got any questions that um, you've, you would like to answer and that we haven't covered already. We're just going to check. Right, we've got one question here at the bottom um, that we'll start with. Um, one of the centres has a group of learners that's having that's currently achieved the certificate on the legacy qualifications, and they're looking to see whether the, it crosses directly with our new set of qualifications onto the extended diploma at level three. Would you help me with that, Janet? Certainly. Um, so, if you have learners that have currently achieved your level three certificate on our old qualifications, but now you want to offer our new suite of qualifications and your learner wish to progress onto the diploma, whilst a lot of the topics obviously are very similar, there isn't a direct crossover or map over. So we have created some support resources that will help you and guide you to what additional um, evidence you need to gather from your learners so that they can um, progress onto the level three diploma on the new qualifications. 
Um, what I suggest you do is, if you're in that situation and the, the particular centre that's asked that question, please drop us an email so that we can contact you directly and we'll support you with those resources um, and help you RPL some of your learners' work over. Obviously, it is on an individual learner basis, so you will have to look at what, what your learners have achieved, but we can give you the support on that. So, good question. Thank you. Um, I'm just looking for another question now, and um, we've got a few here. We just where do we get the resources from? Can we ask that one? Um, where do we get the resources from? Okay, if you're already a registered uh, cash centre, and you should be able to log on to your members area, and there you can access the resources. If you're not yet delivering our qualifications, then please fill out the inquiry form that we will talk about at the end of this webinar, um, and one of our staff will, will contact you and talk you through that. So anybody who is a registered, currently approved registered cash centre, log on to the members area, find the particular qualification that you are interested in delivering, and the resources are there on that page. Um, if you have any difficulties, finding it then um, you know please get in touch and we'll we'll guide you but if you follow the directions I put on the slide then you should find the resources right another one we've got uh, you mentioned how to publication we currently use Heinemann work-based learning is this still relevant to the new qualification support and teaching and learning okay the, the Hodder books have been written um, to completely map the qualifications are new qualifications so they cover all the assessment criteria and all the units of our new qualifications I'm sure other textbooks will have lots of valuable information um, <clears throat> and, and useful topics for your learners um, but we just wanted to highlight that we work in partnership with Hodder Education and it maps directly as I said covering every assessment criteria um, and every unit um, of our new qualifications Another one we've got, um, to deliver this qualification and in turn quality assure it, do we need to have a level four teaching qualification? No, you don't. It is about uh, demonstrating your competence that you are qualified to assess or qualified to internally quality assure. You can demonstrate that you have kept your professional development and your own knowledge and skills up to date. What I would recommend is uh, contact your external quality assurer um, and they can personally guide you through your um, your own CV and make sure that you are suitably qualified. Um, have a look at the resource that I directed you to, um, and also in there we've got really in-depth guidance as to staff competencies. Right. Thank you. And um, unfortunately, we haven't got time to answer all of the questions, but we will try to address them in some additional information that we will be sending you. We really like we really want to thank you for your support and being with us today. Can I just reiterate really what Janet says? If you're not delivering these qualifications already, please complete an inquiry form that will be sent with our email today. This will contain additional information that you'll be able to share with your colleagues. And that's it from all of us, so thank you ever so much. Thank you from Janet.